Hi folks, Glenn here, and this time I've got a tutorial for you all about video and Photoshop CS6. Now, these days we can, we can record video on lots of things. We've got the traditional handheld camcorders, we've got our mobile phones, and obviously DSLRs now can record video in high definition. So, if you're anything like me, I've taken a lot of video footage and thought that sometimes when I'm looking through it, I think that'd make a great photo, but it's on video. So, the question is, how can we get stills from our video footage? Well, that's exactly what I want to show you to do today using Photoshop CS6. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and I've got Mini Bridge open at the bottom and we can see a number of pictures, but on the far right hand corner, I've got a movie file. Now it's the movie file that I want to work on. So I'm going to open that up in Photoshop by just clicking on it and dragging it into the work area. Now, because it is a movie file, Photoshop immediately recognizes that. So it turns us over to the timeline and this is where we can edit the video and also scrub through to see what the content of this particular bit of footage is. Now, I don't want to edit anything on this video at all. All I want to do is to get Photoshop to basically convert every frame of this video into an image file. And we do that by getting it to render it. Now, to render, we can either go to File, Export, and Render Video, or there's a little arrow icon in the bottom left-hand corner. If I click on that, that also brings up the Render Video dialog box. Now, in here, I need to give this sequence of images a name, so I'll call it Field and I need to choose where I want them to be because there's going to be quite a few, so I need to put them into a folder. Now at the moment, mine's set to appear on the desktop, but I'll create a subfolder, which I'll also call Field. Underneath here, we've got an option called a media, sorry, Adobe Media Encoder. Now if I click on the arrow to the right-hand side of that, another option is available to us called Photoshop Image Sequence. And this is where we can tell Photoshop to convert all the frames within the movie to image files. So now we've got format choices. We can either choose JPEGs, bitmap, Photoshop files, PNGs and TIFFs and all that kind of nice stuff. And I'll do nothing else in that area of the dialog box apart from just mention at the bottom here because here we have a section called range. Now if you knew the frame within your particular bit of movie footage that you wanted to convert to an image, you could then tell Photoshop to only convert the frames around that particular one. So it would work a lot quicker. But I don't know whereabouts within my footage I want to choose a frame to convert to an image. So I'm just going to leave it set to all frames. And then I'll just click render. Now depending on how long your sequence of video is will now dictate how long this rendering process takes. This one's maybe around about 14 or 15 seconds. So it shouldn't take long while Photoshop looks at every frame and is now converting it into a JPEG. But we'll just let it do its thing and then we'll jump back in once all those frames have been converted. So now that Photoshop has finished that rendering process, if we just close this video down and we'll jump over to MiniBridge again and look for the folder called Field, we'll now see at the bottom here, if I just make this just a little bit bigger, we can see that we have now got a sequence of image files, JPEG image files that have been created from that video footage. So all I would need to do now then is to look through all of these pictures, choose the one that I wanted, drag it into the work area, and then I could start editing it like I would have done a normal picture which had originally been taken with my camera. Now obviously the quality is not going to be anywhere near as good as what it would be if you'd taken the picture originally with your camera, but with cameras recording in high definition video these days, they are half bad, so it all depends really what you're going to do with it at the end. If you're going to print it really, really big, then yeah, you're going to see a problem with it. But if you're just going to keep it for on the computer, for viewing on your TV screen, or just printing out small to put on the wall, works perfectly fine. I'll see you next time.